Welcome to another episode of the Hoopsite Podcast. My name is Alex Kennedy, and I'm excited for today's show because it's a bit different than usual. Usually we have on NBA players or executives or uh, coaches, but today we have on Ronnie2K, someone who uh, has an extremely interesting life. I think he has the coolest job of anyone I know. Uh, he is 2K Sports Digital Me- uh, Marketing Director. Uh, Ronnie, how you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, not as well as you. You guys just launched NBA 2K18 this week. Um, obviously, yeah. everyone is uh, running to stores to pick it up. Uh, hopefully, some people uh, will have this on in the background as they're playing. I'm sure a lot of your you know loyal followers aren't even bathing or eating this week. <laughs> they're just playing 2K mm-hmm. nonstop. But uh, hopefully yep. they can play this podcast in the background. But uh, it's a big week for you. When when you guys have a launch week like this, how crazy is it? Was it like day to day for you uh, during launch week? I mean, it's it. The last week has been an absolute blur. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it starts with the midnight launches and all of that stuff. Like people going crazy. I mean, even before that, you know, we're promoting in a lot of ways, and the players are getting their copies and they're still talking about their ratings and they're still talking about their team ratings and talking about all of that stuff. But then it really becomes about just moving around promotional events. I, I kind of overcomplicated it this year because we also did that Nike uh, tech thing, the, uh, the Nike Connect, where if you swipe uh, your jersey with a phone, you get some in-game 2K content. That was announced on our launch day, so very unusual for me to be out of the office on our launch day. But such a big brand moment for us that I, I was down in LA with all the NBA players. It was really funny because like they on launch day were more, <laughs> I'm sure more focused on us than even the Nike thing because like oh, so, there's so many avid players in the NBA. All of those guys were coming up to me for copies and um, talking about, you know, how exciting this year had been, marketing campaign had been. And so it was, it was really cool. And then, you know, this whole week has been, pretty crazy um obviously you know we're tracking reviews we had a, a small game issue that we've been dealing with um that's been kind of affecting our consumers and we care so much about those guys that we're trying to get that addressed and you know we want to show love to our developers who worked all summer so we actually had a uh, um developer kind of event last night where we took all the uh the guys that make the game the, the very hard working people i get to work with we took them out yesterday and actually had a surprise visit from Shaquille O'Neal, our legend cover athlete, and so it was cool for all those guys. After a summer of a lot of very hard work that they got to kind of enjoy themselves and uh, meet Shaq. Yeah, very cool. I mean, you have so many cool stories like that where, you know, you're interacting with players and celebrities and you get to go to all these cool different events. So I want to get into all that Mm -hmm. soon. Uh, And I want to talk about kind of your rise, you know, uh, from childhood to now, how you kind of got to this point, because, um, you know, it's a really interesting kind of journey. Uh, But first, you know, obviously, because this is launch week and you guys have worked so hard at NBA 2K, uh, 18. What are some things in this year's game that you guys are most excited about? Some new features that you know fans can get excited about when they go pick up the game. Yep. It's well. It starts with the neighborhood. So obviously, my career we've it's been an integral part of our game. Everybody that plays our game plays that mode. Um, but we wanted to do something bigger and grander this year. So we have basically built like a open world where, like, you know, kind of like The Sims where. All your, all the career guys, meaning mine, yours, and everybody else's, kind of run around a, a neighborhood type uh, environment where it's not just about basketball. Even though our, obviously our game is authentic to basketball, um, it's it's about everything else. So like we have a clothing store where last year was just menus where you pick clothes and that was it. But this year you try it on, you look in a mirror, you like kind of get that experience of you know, talking to a, sh- a store manager and stuff and walking around all these elements. People are wearing ridiculous outfits and, like, interacting with each other in funny ways. There's bikes, there's skateboards, there's pop a shot, there's trivia, there's 2K within 2K, so you can actually play a quick game by sitting down on the couch in the 2K zone through career. So it's a game, it's like video game Inception. I mean, Inception, it's, yeah, exactly. So much, <laughs> there's so much going on with the neighborhood and I mean, people are still finding things because it's such a, a vast um, environment. You know, from a marketing perspective, as cool of a feature as it was to announce and talk about and 
it's uh, obviously our TV spot with you running into NBA players just like you do into in, in the game. It was so grandiose that like you know we didn't even know how to give it the justice it deserves. I don't I don't think people even playing the game have really given it the justice it deserves because there's so much to do there. And then you know there's there's a place called the venue where it's going to have special events and we haven't even announced any of those. So there's still a lot to come within within the neighborhood. And then you know obviously. Our games, gameplay, I really feel like this is the best one yet. It's taken a huge step up. I wasn't the biggest fan of 17's gameplay, so, like, 18 just plays really smooth. It's really nice um, and flows really well. Um, what else? My team has two new modes. GM, League are, are very cool. Um, so I, it's just, the game has something for everyone, but I, I really believe that the neighborhood was the, the big overarching thing this year. Yeah, definitely. Now, the reason, uh, you know, we kind of talked about doing this podcast is because you and I did the interview a while back about how players, you know, care about their 2K rating an awful lot um, and how the ratings are actually determined. I wrote that article mm-hmm. for Hoops Hype. So, um, you know, we had talked over Twitter and things like that, but that was the first time you and I had jumped on the phone and talked. Afterwards, you know, you had so many cool stories throughout that uh, conversation we had that I said, you know, we need to jump on a podcast to get some of these stories out there because you have such an interesting life and such an, an interesting career. Uh, so I want to get yeah. into that now. Um, let's just start from the very beginning. You know, uh, journey from childhood to now. You know, I, I think I read that you grew up in California. Um, you yeah. know, when you were gr- when you were growing up, what was your, um, you know, your goal? You know, what did you kind of major in? Did you always kind of have video games, you know, in mind as a career? You know, what what was that kind of like, uh, you know, when you were younger? And how did you kind of go from there to, to this point now where, you know, you have, you have almost a million followers on Twitter and uh, you're almost a household name for uh, not only, you know, 2K fans, but I think even basketball fans. I think most people know yep. the name Ronnie 2K now. Yeah, I know. It's pretty crazy. Well, I'll start with like, you know, I, I was just like any kid where my mom or, and dad would say video games and sports are a waste of your time. You're never going to make a career out of it. So, you know, <laughs> take that, mom and dad. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, we've all been so, there. Yeah. Take, I'll say the same thing. Take that, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, no, I. so, yeah, I grew up in California. I, it's so crazy that our office is 10 minutes from where I went to elementary, middle, high school. Oh, wow. Um, it's, it's pretty wild when you think about it, especially, I mean, there's a lot of jobs in sports and, but there's very few jobs in sports and tech and especially they get to really have viral marketing attached to it. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to bring that back in a little bit, but I, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, um, in college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I always wanted to work in sports. Like that was the one thing I always want to work in sports. Um, so in college I bounced around and, you know, like marketing isn't really a focus in college, maybe a little bit, but like, I, I actually settled on a, a management science econ degree and so I had a minor in law. And so I did a whole law school application stuff, um, and like dabbled in, in trying to, I wanted to be a sports agent. Um, so I got in law school, uh, a really good one actually. And, um, then I just kind of decided, you know, maybe I should try to um, just make sure that this is what I want to do. I'll go work for a couple law firms. So I went to work for Morrison Forrester and Fish and Richardson, two extremely reputable and well-oiled kind of law firms, uh, corporate law corporate law firms. And so I just, and but at the same time in San Diego, I had a girlfriend at the time back then, and uh. Uh, this, uh, I went to UC San Diego. That's why I'm in San Diego. So I uh, decided to uh, come back to San Diego after my little law stint and um, went to work for a law firm and went to work for a women's minor league based basketball team. Uh, and I loved the basketball team. I hated the law firm. And so I'm like, look, if I'm going to give this a real chance, I, even even though I'm not getting paid basically anything at the women's basketball team. I just got to give this a shot. So I did that for a while. Then I went to work for a baseball team in San Diego, the San Diego Surf Dogs, who are no longer exist. But um, it was from the Golden Baseball League, which is funny. Like Dave Cavill is the uh, uh, president of the A's. He he was 
one of the owners of that league, so it's kind of oh, crazy wow. to see Dave all the time. Um, but anyway, he, uh, we, I did that thing for uh, a couple of years, but what the crazy thing about it was they were looking for stars in the league to bring kind of shine to it. And as a kid, I was like randomly, I, I met Jose Canseco and we kind of stayed in connection. I guess that was my first kind of, kind of athlete connection, connective tissue thing, which is now obviously a big part of my job. Um, and uh, so I brought Jose to the team. I, I like, I was like, let's find this guy and figure it out. And so we, we signed him. And then a week later he found out there was a team in Long Beach and he's like, Hey, you know, my daughter lives in Long Beach. Can you guys trade me there? And I said, God, I just, you know, we just signed you. Like, why, why are we gonna, like, I don't want to do this. You know, like you're the star of our league. I want you on our team. And he's like, well, you know, I'd really like to move to Long Beach. So obviously as a star, we had to ship him off. Well, a week later he was coming back to, um, play against our team, the Surf Dogs, and he said, um, and I was like, you know what, I really got to get him, like, I really got to just kind of needle him, and uh, so the night before, we went to a local bond, bought juice boxes, I swear, by the way, this is all relevant, I'm, I'm getting to the point, <laughs> um, we bought these juice boxes, and I had stickers of his face, and we started putting stickers on these juice boxes, <laughs> and it was right around, it was around like maybe six months after his book had come out and it just felt relevant, you know? And so the next day we gave it as a game day giveaway and it got picked up. It was on sports center. It was all over like kind of mass media. Um, it was my first real viral sports marketing campaign. <laughs> so that kind of like opened up the, the whole, you know, marketing without dollars kind of thing um that you know is now kind of a big part of what i do here at 2k but uh it was it was a really cool experience to do that so then i was like any other kid you know i played 2k since 2k and i played 2k5 a lot and that was the year that i really got interested in the game and so i go right on the message boards and stuff and i played nfl 2k5 a ton way too much um I was on the leaderboards for both of those games, and uh, so I'd write I'd write about them on the message boards. And so 2008 came, and uh, there was this position to run the forums, um, and I, I I didn't like really think that that was a really good use of my skill set, but I was like, hey, it's a door it's a doorway in, you know, like yeah, just, whatever. I'll just I'll I'll do that. Um, so I applied, I got the job ran the forums for a while. Now, you have to remember, like, 2008, uh, Twitter had just been born in 2007, right? And uh, you needed a Facebook. You needed a college ID to even have a Facebook account. Right. So it was it was just kind of funny. The, the, those two platforms didn't exist, let alone Twitter, Snapchat, or I'm sorry, Snapchat, Instagram, et cetera. Those <laughs> obviously didn't exist. So, you know, that I carved out my niche over time, like, when those came about. Um, I, you know, I asked our, our folks, I was like, I have a Twitter account. Can I, should I, should I change, like I own a Twitter account. Should I change it to Ronnie 2K? And they're like, Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Maybe, you know, you, you're already a face on the forums. Like maybe you can become a face a little bit on, on social media. And so we're like, so I set that up and I'll, I'll tell you about how it grew initially, but the, that was kind of how it started. Um, then in so that's, 2011, how you with, that's how you started with 2K then. Through that's the how I forums, started with 2K. And then they yeah. actually turned to you and then said, okay, you know, obviously you know what you're doing from a marketing standpoint. You have the social media stuff down. And then now, just for people who may not know, you have 880,000 followers on Twitter. Um, how did you grow that following? I think people I think people don't realize that, you know, early on Twitter, no one was on there. Like NBA players weren't on there. Teams weren't on nope. there. I, I mean, I was one of the real early people on there too. So it was a really small community. It's nothing like it is I now. I started the account. I started the account in 2009, I want to say, but I didn't really like. I didn't rebrand it or really start talking about 2K until 2012. I think I think it was okay. 11 or 12. I don't remember. I think it was so 12 actually because it's relevant. Well, okay, so I'll give you a couple things that happened along the way. Um, so 2K11, uh, Jordan was on our cover. It was our first really breakthrough into cultural kind of relevance. And with that, at our launch event came celebs and 
players just organically showing up at our event. So I, uh, you know, at that, at that thing, there was all these celebs there and our, you know, some of my coworkers, superiors at the time were like, Hey, we need content. We, we need content. You know, now content is everything. Right. But they're like, they're like, we need to get some content. So Ronnie, here's a microphone go and interview these celebs because I seem like the most relevant person to do it. I also am at their on on their level in a way because a you know I'm about their same height. I'm six six. I uh You're six six? I did not you know, know that. Yeah. I um I, I don't know. I played college ball so there's some relevance there. I you know I've I've I relate with the same things, you know, like back then I was single and, you know, like clothes and cars and you know the same things that every every one of these NBA players like I had relatability to these guys probably more so right. than you know a lot of people that I, I work with um so it just seemed like the right fit so I ended up just having a couple of tequila shots and then sticking a microphone in their face and getting that's some the content to, that's I had, the way to do it <laughs> oh, I'm sure you guys I'm sure you media folks relate with that but media training like that wasn't what I studied um, I've still never had media training, quote unquote, but I've got to just kind of grown to do these interviews and, um, you know, grown it over time, I guess. But so that, that happened, that was the first time we had content. And then, you know, I had about 25,000 followers, um, t- beginning of t- 2012. And so I remember, um, we did that motion capture thing with Justin Bieber <laughs> and uh, he, at the end of it, like him and I really got along, which I don't know how I feel about that, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> we, we really got along. And at the end of the motion capture shoot, he, like I was just getting on a plane, like literally two minutes before I got on a flight and I had to shut my phone off. He tweeted, everybody go, Ronnie's a great dude. Everybody go follow Ronnie CK. Right. Oh, okay. And when I got off the plane, I had, I think my following had grown to like 45, 50 K in an hour. And That's crazy. Minutes. That's nuts. Right. I mean, he, I mean, back then he had, I don't God, he must've had at least 30 million followers at that time. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that, but now my demographics have changed to like 12 year old teeny bobber girl girls, which, <laughs> um, you know, is, is funny, but yeah, I, that, then that happened. And then, uh, you know, but over the years, it became much more of a relevant audience. I was doing a lot more with basketball players on a even non-work basis, like going going to events with them, going to dinner, becoming friends with them. And uh, but it was all in the in the effort of continuing to extend the brand into some a bigger cultural thing, more than just you know a video game, but more of like something that you think about all the time, which I, I feel like we've really broken through on in the last few years. Yeah, you've done a great job of that. And I think also, you know, now if you're a diehard 2K fan, you know, you do giveaways, you provide updates, uh, all, all this stuff about, you know, player ratings coming out before the game comes out. You know, that's yep. all through you and your Twitter account, along with the NBA 2K account. So now I feel like if people want information or want giveaways or uh, things like that, they almost have to go through you. I think that's really helped your following as well. You know, people obviously love your content, but then you're almost an essential source now, too. Uh, but I do want to touch yep. on, you know, something that you just mentioned, um, you know, going out with these players and celebrities. I think that's one of the more interesting parts of your job that people don't realize. Um, you know, when we did that interview about, player ratings you talked about being at harrison barnes wedding and uh you know uh you, like you said you go out to dinner with these guys you know you're hanging out with these guys you know what are some of the craziest stories that you have you know celebrities that you've gotten to meet events that you've gotten to go to you know what are some things that you've been able to do that you know had i been talking to 12 13 year old ronnie who was just a you know sports fan growing up uh would have been blown away by you know what are some things that you've done now that kind of stand out uh, you know, in terms of uh, celebrity or player engagement? Well, that's such a tough question. It's literally like 12 or 13 year old Ronnie would be blown away by it basically every day. Like, <laughs> I mean, just this, just this week, like last night, uh, just yesterday, for example, 
just one, let's just take one day. And by the way, this time of year, I'm extremely exhausted. But uh, yesterday, we did the, the Shaq event, so got to spend some time with one of my favorite players as a kid, like legitimately, when I know a lot of people say, oh, he's my favorite. I was a huge Sha- Shaquille O'Neal fan, so having to get to work with him the past few years has been great. Um, then I had a radio interview with uh, 95.7 The Game with a host that um, used to be on KMBR, which is my our local San Francisco thing, and I used to listen to him all the time. It's just funny, you know? Like, And then, um, then I had to go... Um, meet up with Lil Yachty, Lil Yachty, who's a huge hip hop guy uh, yeah. emerging. Um, and that was just that's just one day, and you know I had dinner last Saturday, for example. I was um, the game, the rapper plays our game a lot, so I uh, he invited me over to his place. I've I've done that a bunch of times. He's he's a great dude, um, and we just played two K for a while. And uh, my cousin from London was with me uh, because because. I'm still very, I'm very close to my family. And so I was like, Oh, I really want to see you because you're visiting LA, but I have to do all this stuff today. Um, can you come with me? And so like we had a meeting with, a, um, Carl Anthony Towns. Then we had, I had to go see the game. Then I had dinner with, uh, Paul George and then Brand, Baron Davis showed up at our dinner and hung out with us. Meanwhile, two, two tables down, LeBron was sitting there and, that night, the night before, he had made that tweet about our game. I don't know if you saw it, where he said, uh, "Like this is inspiring not only me to play the video game, but me to get out there and hoop or something yeah. of that nature." So I just told, uh, I was like, "Hey, man, uh, I really appreciate you saying, like, tweeting that." He's like, "Oh, Ronnie, you guys are killing it. Like, I, I don't even really need to say that." I was like, "Well, hopefully we can work together, you know, again real soon." He's like, hey, "Anytime, you know, whatever you guys need." Uh, I mean. He is the biggest sports star, definitely in the country. And this is the course of a few weeks world. for you. I mean, this isn't this, like so that you was know, the course of a day. I just told yeah. you a, a <laughs> yeah. one, one, what happened on one Saturday. Um, I mean, a lot of people think my, a lot of people think my job is like I get comments, fix the servers, and do this and do that. Oh, <laughs> if I was, you get you get you that know, comment like, a lot. I, I people yell at it, me like, "Tell Ronnie well, to we, fix the we servers." Even, we even. We even leaned into it in the game. There's actually like a, a feature in career where you uh, can text people and I, I text you. And it, like, I'm just playing up a character in the game where I say, maybe soon you'll be able to level the heck out with me. One of the responses is, yeah, sure, Ronnie, but fix the servers. You know, like, <laughs> we, you know, we, we, we really take the feedback seriously. But at the end of the day, like, my role very clearly is to promote the game in any way that we can um, and uh, try to leverage our relationships the strongest way we can. You were talking about the ratings piece. You were talking about the ratings piece. We ended up getting 214 NBA players to ask for the rating. I can't think of another brand that could get that kind of influential level of people to tweet at an account over the course of two weeks. I mean, ultimately, the the reason my Twitter handle has grown so much in that time is because influential people are tweeting at it over the, you know, a very short period of time. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and, that makes sense. But at the, at the, also like at the end of the day, like I, you know, the, the game is like not the game, not the rapper, the game NBA 2K, the, the franchise is, you know, has so many, so many bright people that build this game. And that's, what's really created that kind of, resonating moment and uh you know that's what allowed i mean i can't promote if the game was crap you you couldn't do your job grassroots exactly you can grassroots whatever you want and but ultimately the success of that i've had or that we all have had um as a franchise comes from the product the quality of the product and the quality of the product is second to none so yeah, you guys have a great team there for sure. Um, you know, you mentioned the game. You mentioned little Yachty. I know players obviously recognize you and talk to you a lot. What are some? Who are some other celebrities that you've been surprised by that either love the game or that know who you are? I mean, I think that's always one of the cooler things. Uh, you know, whenever you you kind of get to that point where you do have a huge social media following or you're at these events, um, or even just like someone I'll follows you. I'll give you a couple of examples. There's there's a there's a few funny ones. Um. 
I was actually talking to Carl about this the other day. The first time I met Carl Anthony Towns uh, was at the Jordan party, his rookie year, which was what? God, it can't have just been a year and a half ago, right? Was it two and a half years ago? It was the one in uh, Toronto. What yeah, yeah. God, same year, yeah. Same, I, same I feel like I've known that guy my whole life. Just, yeah. He is, he, is ama- he is an amazing dude, that guy. Um, but uh, anyway, he, yeah, like, and 21, like, God, I wish I was like that at 21. Um, he, uh, the way we met was I was just kind of wandering around, and uh, he he came up to me, and he's like, hey, um, I'm like, oh, Carl, how are you? And we started talking, and he told me that he, like, he just slipped in the middle of the conversation. So, so yeah, I was, I was watching your broadcast the other day and El, uh, Chris like keeps like hating on, and Chris, obviously I'll be my my right hand guy. Yeah. He, uh, he was, he was talking about like, uh, how the Lakers shouldn't draft me and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wait, wait hold on, hold on a second. You watch our broadcast. Like <laughs> why? You know, like <laughs> you don't have anything better to do. I said, no, I watch it every single week. And, I'm like, and then I'm like, yeah, right, like you're making this up. And then he went like, he went into like a diatribe about our past broadcast and also like little intricacies in the game. And I was like, this guy, like, is a hardcore, hardcore fan of two K. I don't know what's happening. Just talking with the Aaron Fox the other day, told me that they that he watched he's watched every one of my broadcasts and says the same thing. I'm like, I'm like. Uh, do they just have our broadcast up in Kentucky dorm rooms? Like, I, I don't really know what's going on. Um, but it was, it was just, I mean, that boggled my mind. That's just a, just a good example of like the, the smaller things that we do that people take notice of that boggle my mind. Um, I'll give you a bigger story. So all-star, what year was it? The one in New Orleans, which are, not this past one, but the, I guess four years ago. Yeah. Whatever, whatever year that was. I can't. They all blend they, together. They all run together. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Drake, who we worked on, uh, we had we had run a commercial with him for two K twelve. Yeah, two K twelve, and uh, so I had met him very, very, very much in passing, um, and I had met him a second time, very, very much in passing, and it probably been two years since I had seen him. Well, I had had so. Well, I went to this Sprite party um, at All Star, and this is when Sprite was the uh, the drink sponsor. Obviously, now it's two. Um, went to this party. He was performing. I left the party because I had to get to the the Jordan party, and it was Michael Jordan's 50th birthday. This this was like one of the most unbelievable nights of my life. But uh, that's a story for another time. Um, and uh, so I I leave. The Sprite party, I get in the cab and I get uh, rear-ended. We get rear-ended in the cab. And this is before Uber, I know. Shocking. There was a time before Uber. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, where the hell am I going to find another cab in New Orleans two days before Mardi Gras during All-Star? Right. Like, w- this is no chance. And I was like just wandering around and finally I go to uh, a cab stand at a hotel. No cabs are coming there because they're not having any trouble finding any business. So I'm, I'm like two minutes from giving up and Drake walks out of the hotel like that. I'm staying at the hotel cab stand and he, he like looks at me and he like, and then he kind of walks over and he's like, Hey, are you, are you Ronnie? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's like, um, what are you doing here? I was, and I told him the story about what happened. Um, um, he's like, we've met before, right? And I'm like, yeah, we very, very briefly. And he's like, no, but I, I like watch your guys' social media stuff, and I'm like, really? Um, and so <laughs> again, Kentucky so, man, he, he has that Kentucky tie too. Something about he's Kentucky. Kentucky too. Oh, God, like, what is going on? And so, <laughs> um, he's so I told him the story, and he's like, he's like, um, yeah. Uh, do you, do you need a ride? Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, sorry. He's like, so where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to the, I just saw you at the Sprite party. So you perform. I'm going to the Jordan frame party. Uh, and he's like, well, I'm performing there as well. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, he's like, do you want a ride? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I don't, I was, 
oh, all right, I'm, I'm good. I'll figure it out. He's like, no, no, no. He kept insisting. And so finally I was like, all right. Um, so me and him got into this big SUV and there was these four really big security guards that were like surrounding us sitting in this car, but me and him were face to face and we were just talking about 2K. That's and, awesome. You know, I've seen him. A, I've seen him a few times since. It's been a while. I don't even even know if you'll ever re- remember this story, but it was, it was pretty crazy um, that night. So, I mean, there's, there's so many stories. That's, that's, that's about as big as it gets, I think. Yeah, Mind there's you, a I lot have, of stories like that. I have one Drake story. Uh, do you remember whenever he was trying to get into the Miami Heat locker room after they won yeah. the championship? So I'm. Yep standing right there i had been waiting to get in the locker room so he's literally standing right next to me and the guy that was you know running security for the the you know miami heat arena he was probably 60 70 years old he had no idea who drake was so like drake's talking to the guy and like there's a video of it but that but that that exchange went on for a good probably five ten minutes before that video even started so i'm telling the guy yeah. like oh he's, he's friends with lebron you know trying to like, explain who drake is to this old man and eventually you know drake got turned away that was the only time i've ever met drake uh you know i've seen him perform at a few different things like all-star wise and stuff like that but that was uh that was like my one running with drake and then of course you know it went viral just because the video uh, you know nothing to do with me i'm just standing there and you know to the side uh but no (laughs) that was uh that was an interesting moment but that's pretty awesome man uh getting the lowest moment and i guess i thought he saw me at my lowest moment (laughs) That's, I mean, that's really what it is. Like we, everybody's trying to, at the end of the day, all these celebs athletes, like who was I talking to about, about this yesterday or today at the end of the day, like they're very much like us. They have very much the same interest. It really isn't that big of a deal. I know that's easy for me to say because I have to deal with it. Uh, it's true though. You know, I mean, every, I think people, every day. people look at athletes and they look at, you know, entertainers and they think, Oh, you know, they're these, they 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 see what they post on Instagram and Twitter and all that. They think, oh, their life is so no, different. No, I'm so from glad mine. you said that. But it, yeah, it, no, like if you look at my Instagram, I probably look like a douche. But I'm like, <laughs> honestly, uh, when fans come up, I mean, we do this for the fans. Um, you know, I I will way out of my way to uh, if a fan wants to talk to me for a while, shake my hand, take pictures, whatever. It's it's really not that I'm always. I'm so stunned that anybody would want that, but, um, you know, it's, uh, that, that's a good segue though. Uh, no problem. That's a good segue. Cause I was gonna ask, what's a typical day like for you? Not during launch week. Cause this, I know these last few weeks have been yeah, crazy. Good, you, but I, say, I couldn't even tell you what I did last week. Yeah, I'm sure. But <laughs> a typical day for you, whenever things aren't as crazy, you know, uh, you know, people see what's going on on Instagram. They see when you meet these celebrities, but just a typical day, I think people would probably be surprised how normal it is. You know, what's a, a typical day like for you during a less busy time of year? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, my job is to handle kind of our digital online footprint. So obviously what we're doing on social media, but um, what we're doing uh, online completely, like the the, re- the, the original reason for my social media handle was to interact with, uh, interact online and give you the news. Like think about the forums, right? I was talking yeah. to 40 people. Now I'm talking to 900,000 just by making a single, a single tweet. We were trying to just grow the size of the reach of, of what I, of the messages that I, I make. I mean, you, in, in this day and age, it's not about putting out a press release, everything you have something to say. And, we're so 365 because the league is so 365 that, you know, we need to have a way to communicate with our fans and as many people as possible on a daily basis, because that's, that's our game is now really a, a 365 product. I mean, we have these my team moments cards. Anytime somebody goes off in the league, you know, we, we got to release some content and try to get us in front of as many people as possible. Um, you know, I, I obviously there's a lot of, I mean, like you said, launch week, there's a lot of interviews and stuff, but it's more right. The regular course of the year is strategy. It's all about strategy. Like all of these things that happen are, are you in an, super are, orchest, orchest are you in an, are you in an office daily? Do you do a lot of work from home. How does that kind of work? Yeah. I mean, this, no, no, no. I, every day, every day that I'm in the Bay area, I'm in the office. Okay. We yeah, I, didn't, I was curious most about that. weekends. Yeah, but I mean, I I do travel a lot, um, and it's right. usually 
the other thing that people don't understand is our partners. Like I'm extremely tied to um, our partner integration. So for example, next weekend I'm at the do event. Um, uh, it's a Mountain Dew event and they're having their finals for the Dew NBA 3X and I'm going to represent 2K because we have booths there and fans yeah. will come and want to see the event and they'll want to meet me and and all That's of that. That's the behind so the scenes this, stuff people don't see. Yeah, people people don't really... I, you know what's funny? Like when they're saying fix the servers or whatever, I'm like, do you see what's happening in this picture? Like <laughs> I am... I'm not like having... It's dinner like with Paul George and, and then go and then uh, like I'm not having dinner with Paul George and then going home and grabbing my hammer and smashing on the servers or something like <laughs> it, it, all t- there's 400 or so people that work at 2K I am just one of them and there's so many hard working people and like uh, we talked about the, the the breadth of the neighborhood and like how ambitious and crazy that was like there's no other game in the industry that's doing something like that. I, I can confidently say that. So obviously, you know, we're trying to push the envelope as much as possible. We're trying to give the fans as much as we possibly can. Um, are things perfect all the time? No, because we're learning about stuff all the time. I mean, the neighborhood is more game, MMO. Yeah, there's going to be things you have to adjust to and, you know. Well, you, the neighborhood work, is more of an MMO more. than it is a basketball game anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. True. So, I mean, obviously, it's still at the core of basketball, but we don't have a ton of experience in the MMO quote, quote unquote world. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna be learning, and by learning, that means we're gonna have stuff in the marketplace that's not 100 percent perfect. How do you deal um, with that criticism? Because I mean, I'm sure early on it probably bugged you more. You're probably more well, used to it now. But you know, is that something that bothers you? Do you ignore it? Do you even no, check? No, I mean, mentioned? ultimately, ultimately, I can't control that stuff. That like the server, like if they say fix the servers, I'm like, it's not my job. But on top of that, like it's it's just the old. I also understand that that's just a an easy thing to go to in the age that we live in. You know, internet trolls and keyboard warriors and all that. It's just a it's just a fact of life, and that's totally fine. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. Like I obviously read all the feedback. I do, but I, you know, I can only provide the feedback to our amazing dev team uh and honestly most of the time when i email them and i say hey have you guys looked at this they're like oh yeah we already know about it we're already either yeah, we're gonna fix it or they're on top make of it, it better right? they're on top of it themselves they read my twitter account more than i probably do <laughs> <at this laughs> that point. makes sense that makes sense <laughs> so we talked about some players you're close with uh obviously like i yep. said you're at harrison barnes wedding you know car anthony towns you're close with are there any players you've had like legitimate beef with i know there's there's always you know some talk about guys not liking their rating but that always seems like it's yep. not really that big of a deal you know I'll, you know well, and I'm, it's usually orchestrated i don't know if you saw the ben yeah. Simmons thing. did you see that <laughs> i did see that and i know i know you have you have fun with some of these things like at the john wall well then the, the, the launch one. day so so let's just talk about that Simmons thing real quick, if you don't mind. The uh, yeah, yeah. That whole thing, that whole thing happened on Twitter, right? Where him and I went back and forth. I was putting out salt shakers and all that. The whole time we were DMing, like, and and I don't know if you saw, but on launch day he was at the Nike event, and he was one of the first athletes that came out to me. He's like, "Hey, where's my copy of 2K?" And I was like, "Oh, I thought you didn't play." Like, <laughs> isn't that what you said on Twitter? And he was like, "Oh shoot," <laughs> he was funny. like. He was like, you, like, ultimately he forgot that he said that. So I was like, oh, the only way I'm giving you a copy of 2K is if you take a picture with me holding the cover of the game. That's what, cool. And the reason for that was because he had said all that stuff. So my caption was, this guy neither plays 2K nor knows who I am. And yet here he is holding a copy of 2K, putting his arm around me. So those things, those and, things know, happen like, a lot. But I think anytime you interact with players, like, I mean, I've had it happen with media you know i've gotten into it yeah. with rajon rondo or darren williams like you guys don't like something that's been written or they're upset after a loss and in my case you know um i've had you know issues with players are there any like legitimate beefs that you've had with guys that aren't orchestrated um i mean not any that lasted very long like you know at the end of the day video games are fun i know the media is a little tougher because ultimately it's on print and you know you guys got to stand by what you've said with us, it's more like, you know, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, it's a video have, game. It is a, at the end of the day, it's a video game, and it's all fun. And uh, I mean, I'm sure there are a few that don't love me for whatever reason. I'm sure, including you know, 
we also, at the end of the day, we're also producing TV shows or TV commercials and little special content with each of them. So I have a lot of kind of not, um, I kind of have a hand in like how they're presenting themselves in our campaigns, especially for like some of the social content, like the 2K day stuff and whatever. Um, maybe they don't love that. And maybe by reference, they don't love me, but I, I, I don't think I've ever had a real beef. I mean, I've definitely got some flamey um, DMs. John Walton is right has right now blocked me after the whole 90 thing, which is kind of funny. But because him and I have always been really good friends, but yeah, maybe he's not talking to me right now. I don't know why, but uh, it's probably because he's unhappy about his 90. But that won't last long. He'll be, you know, in in person. I you know, John and I are are close, so it should be it helps. Good. It helps being six six too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that probably helps. Okay, so last question for you. Thank you for making time to do this today. I really appreciate no it. Um, a lot of the questions that were coming in when I was talking to people on Twitter and letting them know that you were going to be on the podcast, people were basically asking, you know, how can they become a community manager? You know, what should they do in terms of pursuing a degree? What experience should they try to get? You know, basically, sure. what can they, what can they do to try to follow in either your footsteps or Chris's footsteps and eventually work at a company like 2K or or work at 2K? So a lot of the people at 2K have extremely different backgrounds. My background, I just walked you through, has have really had nothing to do with video games, more to do with sports, but not really to do with anything. Um, I mean, I started with grassroots, and now I'm in social media, so it's sort of connected, but not real. I mean, again, I I kind of was really, really passionate about sports and to a, just a smidge lesser degree video game, um, and I just carved out my own niche and just kept working and it is a round the clock thing. I mean, my social media doesn't turn off when I go to bed. I, I have slept maybe, I don't know, 12 hours in the last week and a half, I would say. Oh, so it, it is kind of, it is kind of a round the clock thing, but everybody has had a different way here. So Chris, um, since you brought him up, was in the, the video editing world working for Lakers nation. And, um, he was a huge Kobe fan, you know, like, Right. He is still, unfortunately, a huge Kobe fan. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he, you know, so he had that kind of path. A lot of the people that are here were testers. A lot of the people here, um, you know, were in QA or uh, a lot of them had engin- have engineering backgrounds. So there, there's a lot of ways to carve it. I wish there was just some scientific answer I could go to. But... Uh, if you really want this to be your career and you have a real passion for it, you'll figure out, you'll, you will figure out a road and it's not the same for everyone, but you know, anything is, I guess, possible. Yeah. It's one of those jobs where it seems like, you know, you're not really working, you know, you, you, you obviously don't get a lot of sleep and you're, you're doing a lot of things, but if you're passionate you're working about it, really it's, something, hard. Yep. it's something that you love, you know, you don't feel like you're waking up every day, like, Oh, I have to go to work. Uh, so that's always, yeah. uh, that's always fun when you have a job like that. Ronnie, thank you so much for, uh, for, for making time to do this today. Um, you know, taking time away from Drake and LeBron and slumming it with someone like me uh-huh. on the podcast. <laughs> I appreciate no you. Uh, appreciate you making time. Make sure you guys go follow Ronnie on Twitter at Ronnie 2 K. Make sure you go pick up NBA 2 K 18, which is in stores now. Uh, like I said, I'm sure uh, most of you guys have already done that anyway. Um, you know, it, it seems like all of my followers are, are playing it nonstop right now. Uh, Ronnie, thanks yeah. again, man. And, uh, go get some sleep, buddy. I'll do my best. Thanks. Alex. I appreciate it. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You can find all episodes of the Hoopsite podcast on audio boom. And of course on hoopsite.com. We're also on iTunes, Google play, Stitcher until next time. Thanks for listening.